Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2020 Acura RDX A-Spec all-wheel drive. Last time we got the suspension on it so we could get it off the trailer. Uh, we took our fender off and took it apart a little bit and dissected our rocker and A-pillar to see what we're going to need inside there. So we got a piece of our A-pillar so we can go ahead and repair that. And I think we got most of our parts. So let's see how far we can get today. Let's get started. So it took a little work, but I did manage to find a good deal on the A-pillar. Now the prices kind of range from anywhere from $1,000 down to, well, $300 because that's what I paid for this one. The reason for that is in order to get this A-pillar out, they got to pull the dash. So unless they have the dash already out, they need to figure that in for labor and it's kind of labor intensive. So it adds to the price of the A-pillar. Uh, this one I decided to go with used because I only need this little part here. I can buy the entire Unicide from a Honda. It's like 600 bucks. It was actually gonna be cheaper if I couldn't find any other ones, but I do need the one little piece that's inside here. And that would be the whole A-pillar that I'd have to buy on top of that. This one, I could just take that little piece off and put it on. So it ends up saving me. And as a bonus, we ended up getting our sensor and our bracket here, which isn't too expensive, but from Honda, I believe it was like 40, 50 bucks, something like that. So. I got a $40, $50 value there. So really I paid 250 bucks for this little piece. Maybe that sounds like a lot, but I figured paying 700 bucks for it. So I'm money ahead. So let's get our piece cut out here, uh, our piece inside cut out, save our little sensor and uh, go throw all that stuff on our other one. We'll even use our bag from our 2022 Acura RDX, one with 800 miles. Got that for free as a bonus. I could straighten the bracket. It's not that expensive, but now I got one, so I don't have to. We also need at least this plug down here. So our other one was all smashed. So that's another bonus. I have no idea how much those cost. But since it's a Honda, it's probably expensive. We need to get our seam sealer and our rubberized undercoating off of here so that we can see our spot welds. We're also going to take it off the rest of the piece just because we're going to have to have it off there anyway so we can paint it. This stuff is pretty thick. It's almost like seam sealer, but it does come off pretty easily. They just coat right over the rubber plug so we can pop that out of there. And continue scraping the rest of it off of here. Get the little leftover pieces so we can see our spot welds. And then we can start on the actual seam sealer. This stuff's not quite as soft as the rubberized undercoating. And it probably would help to heat this up, but the torch is too far away and I'm too lazy to walk to get it. There's not that much. We'll just scrape it off. We'll go a little further at the top here. I think I'm gonna take a little extra of this piece off. Now that we see all our spot welds, we can start drilling them out. We're just gonna use our flat tip drill bit. Nice and slow. This is high strength steel and it doesn't drill all that nice. Just take our time so we don't burn up any bits. Now that we have all our spot welds drilled out, we can use our reciprocating butter knife to cut through. We're just gonna cut the outer panel. Once we get to the inner panel, we'll stop. And it's gonna take us all day to cut through the whole thing. But this will make a nice straight line. And then we can use our die grinder to finish it off. We can't get it in the corner, so we're gonna go cut something else. We'll start our first cut with our Sawzall, and then we'll finish it up with our die grinding disc. As we cut with the disc, it gets smaller, so we should be able to get into that corner. And if it doesn't get small enough, we'll just use one of the old ones that we saved, switch it out, and it'll fit right in that corner, which is what we ended up doing. Now 
one more little corner at the bottom I couldn't get to. Now we'll use our scraper to really get into that corner. Now we can heat up our structural adhesive so we can pop it off of here. We could use the scraper to run it down there and break it all loose, but you risk bending the piece. You heat it up, it'll just pop right off. Slide the scraper in there. A lot of the spot welds already broke free with the reciprocating butter knife. The vibration from the saw breaks a lot of those spot welds loose. That's why I always drill the spot welds first and then go over with the sawzall. Just a little time-saving tip you learn with experience, that doing things in the right order can actually save you a few seconds here and there, but ends up turning into a few minutes over the course of a build. And maybe even a few hours if the job happens to be, well, much bigger than this tiny little one. We're gonna continue down the edge of our piece here, just heating up our structural adhesive as we go, getting our scraper in there and breaking all the spot welds free. We're gonna flatten it out a little bit so that it's ready to go on our new car. And we have a little bit of foam in here, so we're gonna heat that up so that it'll break free. And there is a little bit of structural adhesive right behind where those hinge bolts go in. There's also a spot weld down there, and we can't really get a scraper down to it, so we're gonna to have to pry on the edge of it and hope for the best. That's the one you always hope you drilled it perfectly centered. Sometimes it helps to drill a little bit bigger hole. We're gonna try and pry on it. We don't wanna bend the piece too much, but we just wanna Try to shake that one spot weld loose that we can't get to. Now we can do all these along our pinch weld. Most of them broke free from our sawzall and the vibration. So that saved us quite a bit of time. And we're down to where the foam is still holding it on. Looks like everything on that seam is broke free. Now we can do our bottom pinch weld. And these are all broken free as well. Looks like all we have left holding it in is a little bit of foam. Maybe some structural adhesive. We'll pry up on it, hold a little tension on it, and heat it up at the same time so that glue gives up the fight. We'll scrape out all of our foam so we can see the spot welds on the top of that little piece we need to take out. Looks like Ronald McDonald left his wig in here. Not going crazy, just enough to see that lip on the end of our piece. And we got some great stuff in there, factory great stuff. I guess they felt we needed a flotation device in our pillars. Now we start drilling out our spot welds. Again, we're gonna use our flat tip drill bit, nice and slow. We don't tear up our drill bit. And maybe we can make it through this entire job in only one drill bit. We can take our scraper and knock this piece off. Lots of foam in there. I'm gonna scrape it out of there and see if there's a way to put it back in when we're done. And there is. There's a hole in the bottom, so we can fill it back up. Well, there's no way this build is ever going to get done until we meet the minimum door removal requirement. So let's get started with that. And I chose to work on it right here. I could have chosen anywhere in the shop because there's the drain and it makes this a little more exciting. It's just a door removal. So got to liven it up a bit, right? It's my theory anyway. Actually, I chose right here because over there there's less room. And that's where it's gonna end up when I'm done. So all we have to do is pull our four bolts out of our hinges. I never plugged it back in, didn't put the door check in. Then lift the handle and take it off. Probably could have done it blindfolded, but this is an expensive door to play that game with. So, we can pull our sill plate out, just a little wiggle and pull. And then we can get our kick panel out of here. Also some wiggle in the hole. Toss all that in the back seat. And pull our gasket out of here. Expose our pinch weld. And we might as well remove that trim panel from the side of the dash while we're here. 
So we have our new piece. I cut a lot more than I actually needed. Just it's easier to cut extra and trim it down later than it is to add to it. So we'll find a good place to put it in, probably right about there and somewhere between the welds and the holes on the bottom over here. And that'll take care of all that. And then of course, we're gonna change this inside piece because well, no one's ever gonna see it, but that dent's gonna bother me for some reason. So it's like seven welds. I'll we'll just pop all those welds out of there, put a new one up, weld it up, done. And then we can trim this where we want it. We'll set it up here. We'll use our piece that we trimmed to mark our actual car. We'll trim it there. That way there's no measuring. It's just using this as a template and we'll cut it off and put this piece up there and it should fit. And we'll put our backings in and weld it all up. So, uh, well, let's get all that done. Explaining all that brought up a question you guys have asked me in the past, and it's why do I use a backing in some place and overlap in others? Well, here we have to use a backing everywhere because the thickness matters. And if we overlap it, we're gonna have the thickness of this metal, which might only be a couple millimeters, uh, but that'll make a big difference uh, when you close the doors because the gasket will seal tight, so it might give the door a little pop. Uh, and it's not gonna look good if you know there's a little bulge in there. So we can't overlap it, even though I prefer to overlap everything because it's way easier than putting a backing in there. So we want it to be flat, we're gonna put a backing in here. That's why I do it. Uh, certain parts, it doesn't matter. Um, if you've got it inside of another panel or somewhere where the height doesn't matter, overlap it, no problem. Uh, make it a lot easier and you're never gonna notice. So unfortunately, this isn't one of those areas. So we're butt welding everything with a backing. So first we're going to trim our donor piece down. I put some tape on there to keep me going straight. Give me a nice line to cut across. By trimming this piece, we set it up there, use this as a template. If we cut the car piece first, then we have to take the pieces that we cut off and mark these and measure it out that way. So this just makes it a lot easier. One last little piece here. And the pieces that we cut off will become our backing. Now we're just going to clean the little burrs off the edge so that it fits flush. While we're here, we'll clean up the spot welds as well. And give it all that foam. And we'll stick our piece up there. And line everything up. Line it up with the edges of our old piece. And line up the holes for our hinge. And make sure we got it where we want it. Once we draw our line and cut it there, can't put it back, so. Scribe a line in here. And I don't use a marker because markers wipe off. Scribe lines are nice and precise and they don't wipe off. So that's why we scribe it. Not to mention if you're gonna prime these parts and you're gonna prime over the lines, if they're scribed in there, you're still gonna be able to somewhat see them. If they're painted on or drawn on, you're gonna cover them up. Mark our rear cut. Looks like I'm gonna need to stop by HR and file a complaint Looks like the supervisor has been wearing my uniform. Now we pull our piece off and we cut it on a line. Use our die grinder for this. We don't want to cut it to the sawzall because we'll end up cutting through the pieces underneath. Although there is quite a bit of space in there. We're going to leave a little extra up here. I'll explain myself in a second. Extra little piece out of there. Instead of drilling these spot welds out, which isn't a whole lot of fun, we're going to go ahead and grind them out. It's much quicker, leaves a nicer finish because it's nice and flat, and we don't care about the piece that we're cutting through. So we'll just grind them out. We'll cut the little corners of our piece with our tiny little die grinding disc we've been hoarding for just such an occasion. Our piece should be ready to come out. We'll give it a little wiggle and pull first and see how many we can break loose without the scraper. 
And it looks like all but one. Because you know, there's always one. And some foam. Toss that in a pile. Now we're ready to fit our piece up here and hopefully we cut everything in the right spot and it fits. If not, we're gonna turn off the camera and pretend like it did. Looks like we don't have to pretend, they actually fit. So now we're gonna go ahead and mark our little piece, our hinge mount. It's actually more of a spacer. The bolts go through this piece and actually bolt into the piece that's below it. And in order to get that little piece, you have to buy that whole A-pillar. Pretty pricey from Honda. So when you buy a used one, you can just take that little piece off. Mark our hole in the center at the bottom. It'll help us line it up. And when it's all marked, we can start grinding out all of our spot welds. A little more to grind. This piece is a little thicker than our outer panel. Hopefully we ground all the way through. We can get our scraper in there. Now we gotta get all our foam out of here. I'm gonna have to drill a hole all the way through that foam to the other side because from inside that pillar is how you get that foam in there. Now we're clean up all the spot welds that we're gonna weld to. Now we're going to scuff it up, get rid of all the rest of that foam, because we need to prime all that. We scrape some of the paint and primer off of there, and we don't need it rusting. Make sure you make this scuffing face, or you have a risk of the paint peeling back off. I'm actually trying to sand off some of that foam, whatever we didn't get with our scraper. So the part we just scuffed, we're gonna put regular old etching primer on there. And we don't wanna get that where we're gonna to have to weld to because, well, you can't weld through primer, it doesn't work out so well. You can weld through, weld through primer. So we're gonna tape it off. That way we can paint everything and then put our weld through primer on where we peel our tape off. I could have just primed everything and then ground it down later, but then I won't be able to tell exactly where the welds go. This way, I know exactly where they go. Put our primer on there. Haphazardly. This is the only painting I'm allowed to do. And we scraped all the foam out of our little hinge block here and ground down where the weld through primer is going to go and taped it off. Now we can go ahead and coat it with some primer. While that dries, we'll peel off our masking tape. Get our car side with our weld through primer. And now that the little piece is dry, we can peel off our tape on this side and hit this with our weld through primer. Now everything's dry. Let's set our little block up here. Trying to see our lines. That's why we scribe. Definitely would have gotten rid of any lines we drew on there with a marker or pen, especially since we painted over them. Now because it bolts through this piece, we're just gonna line it up. Then we're gonna drive the bolts in there to hold it tight and hold it in place. Gonna snug them up. Then we'll use our electric ratcheting hammer to fine tune it, get it right on those lines that we scribed. Then we can tighten it all the way up. All of our spot welds are right where they belong. Put a couple clamps on there and start tacking it up there. And trying not to set the car on fire because there is still some foam in there. The process is pretty much going to be weld one weld, put out the fire. Weld one weld, put out the fire. That's the best way we can do it. 
Okay, we got two welds that time. Move the clamp around, get that front edge. And put out our fire. And then we should be out of harm's way. Now hopefully if my welds are any good, I can pull these bolts out and that piece will stay where we put it. They're still a little warm. And we're going to go ahead and scuff this up, grind down all of our spot welds, and get the rest of our glue that's on there off of there. We don't care if it's bare metal, we're going to need it bare metal anyway. I'm going to go ahead and mask this off, because we don't want any primer getting on this. The rest of this we can go ahead and prime. We're never going to see it again. I hope. Get a good coating in there. So I ground everything down and I put our primer, our etching primer, on all of our welds because we're going to cover this up and never see it again. Uh, this is all still bare metal because there's bonding agent that goes here and we're going to have to put weld through primer on here. Uh, I went a little crazy with the primer and ran it all over the place. That way it fills in behind all these seams, drips down in there and any bare metal that we had in there will get covered up. I don't care if it doesn't look good because by the time somebody sees that, uh, this car's got more problems than my runs. Uh, because they're taking it apart again. So now we're gonna put our piece up here. I gotta put my backings in. Uh, and I did talk about the reason I don't use backings everywhere. Well, we're gonna do kind of a hybrid style. We're gonna put a backing in here where our height or thickness does matter. Uh, and then we're gonna overlap it here where our thickness is not quite as important. So this piece will sit right there. It'll be flush here. And if I push it in enough, it'll actually pretty much be flush here. Uh, might have a little bit of a ridge, but not a big problem because there's a piece that goes in here. You're never going to see it. Uh, and it's inside the door over here where the door seals. We want it to be nice and flat. So that's where we're going to focus on getting it the same thickness here. We're just going to go with what's easiest. So let's get our backings in here. And keep going. I've also had a few experts tell me that instead of putting a backing in there or overlapping it, I could get a flange tool and overlap it and it would be the same thickness. Uh, well, I actually have a flange tool. The problem is when you start punching flanges on pieces that aren't flat, uh, they become flat and they're not supposed to be. So a flange tool really isn't going to make everything, you know, a flange evenly all the way down. If it did, it'd be great and I would use a flange tool all the time. Unfortunately, unless you're putting in a flat panel, a flange tool really doesn't work all that well. So yeah, I guess we're gonna do it the way I've always done it. So when you put it in there, it just basically bends it like that so that you can overlap the panel. That's all it does. And this side punches holes so that you can spot weld it. So our backings are in. We cleaned up all the edges, all of our spot welds, both sides, and we're ready to dry fit our piece. We'll push our door gasket on there. That should hold it in place. Probably better than my welds. Look at that. Now we'll go grab our door. Our brand new door from Honda, complete with bubble wrap. It was actually cheaper than used ones. Junkyards are very proud of their doors. And since I didn't need any of the guts, I basically only needed two hinges and a door shell. It made sense to just buy the new one. If I had needed the moldings, the regulator, the glass, and all that nonsense, it might have been a benefit to get a used door. But since I didn't, the new door was way cheaper. I did need a mirror, but when you buy a used door, you don't get a mirror. I ended up getting one from Honda. Painted the right color. You can order these in color, just like the old days. Start our bolts. If I can find the other one. Probably headed for the sewer. Do 
We don't have a latch in the back of the door because I haven't taken the other door apart yet, but we can still fit it up and make sure it fits. If everything lines up when we put our latch in, hopefully it latches. I'm willing to risk it. I think I got the door where I want it. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. And we're just gonna have to hold it closed and check our gaps. And everything looks like it's fitting like it should. Nice gap all the way down. Although our door is the wrong color. We got one of these very special doors. This door was built at the Honda plant on the bring your child to work day. And apparently one of the activities of the day was letting your toddler seam seal the door. Because that was clearly done by a toddler. Come on, Honda. You can do better than that. So now that we know everything's in the right place, we can pull our door apart, pull that piece back off of there, put our glue in there, and hopefully put it together for the last time. We could pretend that I was test fitting the door for quality control, but we really know I just put it up there to pad the door removal count. So we're gonna pull the door off yet one more time. We haven't lost any bolts yet, so. We'll keep trying. So since we have no latch in the back of our door, there's nothing holding the back of the door on it, just setting up there. We're playing with fire. Not literally, like we were earlier playing with fire. Uh, we're just hoping that we don't drop it on the floor and have to buy this very expensive door all over again. But at least there's bubble wrap on it, should it fall. That'll protect it. So we'll go give that to the painting gnome, let him fix some of that seam sealer and edge it all out for us. And we're going to go ahead and put our piece in here. And put our forbidden icing in here. Anywhere that they put it, we're putting it back. And Leonardo da Vinci here is going to paint out all of our glue so that we cover up all of our bare metal. We don't want any bare metal showing, that's just a place for rust to start. Fun fact, art class was almost the reason I didn't graduate college. Turns out I'm more autistic than artistic. Toss that acid brush in a pile and stick our piece up here. We already have all of our weld through primer on the back side and all of our spot welds. Now we can go ahead and put our bolts in here and hopefully not get too much of that bonding adhesive on the threads or we're never going to get these things out because they'll be permanently loctited in there. And we're not going to take them out until we're completely done. We want to give that bonding adhesive plenty of time to cure. So we're going to move it around to where we want it and tighten it down. We go ahead and clamp everything else up. Make sure we got both panels perfectly flush. And we need to adjust this front edge a little bit. Put the clamp on there, not tighten it all the way down, just keep it snug, tap it in place, and then clamp it down. Another clamp on there. That way we can weld on both sides of it. And we're ready to start welding after we get a few more clamps in here. And a couple more adjustments. So we got our piece all welded up. The bodywork gnome came in and ground everything down for us and put a little filler on our seams to cover up all the grinding marks and fixed a dent up here and stuff. Uh, then the painting gnome came in and edged out underneath our hinges and all the rest of our parts. So we're ready to throw our hinges up here and get the door all lined up and then pull the door back off, leave the hinges on there and we'll paint everything just like Honda did. 
except we'll have paint under the hinges because Honda didn't do that, uh, but I want to. So we'll do all that next time. That's enough for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.